name's Connor McDonald. This is how you tweet me. This is where I live. And I spend a lot of time working on Ask Tom, answering questions. And the tool I generally use for that is SQL Plus. And I thought I'd share with you some hints and tips on using SQL Plus today. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's just because you're a dinosaur and you know, SQL Plus is 30 years old and who wants to use that nowadays? But there's a couple of good reasons why you want to know about SQL Plus and how to use it effectively. Number one is it's everywhere. It doesn't matter what platform you're on, what version you're on. If you ever get asked to help out with an Oracle database, you know that you'll be able to run SQL Plus. You won't need to bring any tools in, etc. It's always going to be there. The other thing is a lot of the more modern tools like SQL Developer, which is you know, 4 million downloads, SQL CL, all those tools use the same scripting features for formatting output as SQL Plus do. So anything you know about SQL Plus helps you with these modern tools as well. So why do people get frustrated with SQL Plus? Let's have a quick look. As you can see here, I've connected on SQL Plus and let's just run a very simple query, select from V dollar database. And this is why people get a bit frustrated with SQL Plus. It's almost impossible to read. The, the headings are all over the place, there's no scrolling. Uh, I don't even see the data because the headings have come out so often. But it just requires a few little simple things to make your SQL Plus work well. So let's get rid of this one. Next to that. Let's have a look at login.sql, which is the file that gets run every time you connect to a database in SQL Plus. So let's have a quick look at mine. I set some, column, some common column name formats. Okay, these are col column names I'll often see in my queries, so I've set them. Um, to limit their size or even truncate them if I have to or word wrap them. Um, then I have some simple things, some simple globals. I set my line size to 130. Um, that's about the that size of my laptop screen. Page size 99. Trim spool removes any trailing spaces in my spool. A couple of important ones for me. Exit commit off. Uh, there's a link you'll see in the bottom there about uh, a whole new video on exit commit and why it's super important to have set to off and also array size, and you'll see another link to one of my YouTube videos about array size and why it's important. Those two features I always look after in my login.sql. I don't have server output on by default, that's why it's commented out. Uh, the reason for that is, if I'm using dbms xplan display cursor, uh, it'll pick up dbms output rather than the last SQL I ran if I've got server output on all the time. Then a couple of things I do. Um, I take advantage of the new value facility in SQL Plus, which lets you remap column output into variable names. Let's look at a, a quick example of that. Let's connect as demo. So if I do col, say, A, new value B, then if I select a column that's called A, you can see the value goes into my variable called B. That's a nice easy way of running a query and storing the results in a variable in SQL Plus. Now I use that to do a little bit of magic here to work out what version of Oracle I'm running on. If I'm running on 12, then what I'm going to do is remember the container name if I'm in a pluggable database um, and store that in a variable. Otherwise, I don't need to because obviously there's no pluggable database on version 11 or below. The reason I do that is I'm going to use that to set my SQL prompt. So let's have a look at how that works in this version here. So if I connect as Scott Tiger, you can see I pop out the fact that I'm Scott Tiger and then have my SQL prompt. And that will follow me all the way down, you can see. I'm also using, if I jump back to my login.sql, the host command to run the title command on Windows. What that does is it sets the title of my DOS prompt to also being the connection name at the database name. So I always know what's on. That's important to me because I don't want to be logged on to a production database when I think I'm logged on to a test database. That's quite useful. And every time I change connections, if I connect this demo again, you can see the setting is back to demo 12 and the title as well has changed to demo 12. So that's quite useful. Um, if I keep scrolling down in my SQL prompt, I've got these last ones at the end here. Uh, a lot of the common names, profile, object name, table name, I'm setting it all to 830. Why? If you do a describe on DBA, say, tables in 12C, let's scroll up a bit, you'll see that owner and table name are now varchar2128. Now in 12C you're still limited to 30 characters, but that perhaps suggests to you that in a future release of Oracle, we're going to let you have much longer column names and table names and object names. But at the moment, I'm using my SQL plus login 
to set that to 30 characters so they don't get all over the place. Then with SQL Plus, really, it's just creating a little library of scripts. Like for me, I have a whole lot of scripts. Like if I want to see what tables I've got, I can run this tab. I've got one table called T. If I want to describe it, I've got a thing called app describe called T. It just does describe, but also then shows me the indexes as well. You just build up a little library of facilities. So let's run my VLA database query again. And even with my scrolling, you can see it's a little bit all over the place. So I borrowed a script from my friend Tom Kite, who select PT. And that simply returns the data down the screen as well. So even with big wide tables, okay, you can get some easy ways of formatting SQL Plus output. Hope you found that enjoyable, and I hope you enjoy using SQL Plus. See you again next time.